Good evening, all. It is uh, simply fantastic to be here with you in a packed house for one of the great moments in uh, the life of uh, Bowdoin College. So welcome all, our students, faculty, staff, and our guests. Uh, I do want to especially thank my colleagues on the faculty, most of whom are right here, uh, uh, for being here tonight, for helping to celebrate and representing your departments, uh, the great accomplishments of our students, uh, and for helping them uh, in realizing those accomplishments and for doing all the amazing work that they do. So I'd like to ask everyone to give our faculty an enormous hand. So, thank you. So this is a, a, a great occasion. We uh, have the opportunity to hear from one of our uh, stellar faculty members uh, to celebrate uh, another faculty member who's been selected to uh, give a talk next year, as well as beautiful music from uh, our students, and then a recognition of all of the accomplishments uh, that you have made, or most of the accomplishments, I'll come to that in a second, that you've made uh, this year um, uh, in your academic and intellectual pursuits at the college. We spoke, we focused specifically tonight on departmental awards and honors. Uh, it gives us the, an occasion to, as I said, to recognize your high achievements, but we do not uh, do everything. There are some that are still subject to the submission of uh, theses, and one of which I know went in today, there's Ayanna. Uh, but uh, all of the awards will be recognized uh, in the commencement program at commencement in a couple of weeks. Now, we had a luncheon earlier today where we honored students who were selected to receive awards where we recognized their leadership and their character and their personal achievements. We celebrated four seniors who've been given the privilege or earned the privilege, actually, of being selected as speakers for both commencement and the baccalaureate ceremonies. And I want to recognize um, them. Uh, the Michael, sorry, the Goodwin Commencement Prize to Ayana Opong Nantachi. <laughs> the class of 1868 prize to Ethan McClear. Where are you, Ethan? Raise your hand. Are you here? I don't know if Ethan's here. All right, I won't, but we give Ethan a hand too, so. The Dalva, Dalva Stanwood Alexander First Prize to Sarah Lerman. And the Dalva Stanwood Alexander Second Prize to Zoe Wilson. The leadership prizes that we presented this afternoon were as follows. The Franklin Delano Roosevelt Cup to Paul Wang from the class of 2024. So Paul will be sitting here next year at this time. But we can give him a hand. So. The Michael Francis Michike III Award to Margot Adelin No, class of 23, Margot. I know you're here somewhere. The Andrew, Andrew Allison Haldane Cup to Suleiman Torre. And the President's Award went to two recipients, uh, Ayana Opan and Petri. And to Peyton Tron. So I invite you to sit back, enjoy the evening, revel in your own accomplishments and those of your classmates, uh, and I welcome to the podium Dean Jennifer Scanlon. Good evening, everybody. It's really great to be here. And it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker tonight, Sarah Harmon, Assistant Professor of Computer Science and recipient 
of the 2022 Sidney B. Karofsky Award for Junior Faculty. Professor Harmon is an interdisciplinary scientist, bringing computer science skills to areas such as biology and psychology in her work as director of the Bowdoin Computational Creativity Lab, a research program exploring how human-computer interaction can enhance our daily lives and the common good. One of the projects Professor Harmon's class undertook, which also raised money for a local nonprofit, required students to create a system that made computers able to generate and evaluate cookie recipes. <laughs> this posed, of course, the weighty question of whether, than hu whether computers can be better at, than humans at achieving even culinary tasks. Other pioneering projects of hers include designing apps to promote nutritional literacy and healthy eating, and working on technologies designed, among other things, to strengthen mental resilience, help teachers in the classroom, create music, and explore natural language processing techniques. Sarah's talk is called Three Stories That My Computer Didn't Tell Me, featuring anecdotes about play and problem solving. So please join me in welcoming and congratulating Professor Sarah Harmon. that down. All right. Thank you for the warm introduction. It's so humbling to be here and see all of you and I can't wait to get back in the audience and start cheering for you because I know about all the hard work that it has taken for you to get to this point and make all of these achievements happen. So I'm going to be brief. I've only got three stories for you today, three stories that my computer did not tell me. That being said, I am a computer science professor, so the stories that I'll tell you today are inspired by computational problems as well as problem solving in general. And these stories are also about people because computer science, when it comes down to it, is about people. Now, some of you might be thinking that computer science is the study of computers and that humans don't have much to do with it. But the first computers were actually humans. The term computer used to be a job title. A computer was just a capable person who could compute. Dr. Gladys West was one of those people, for example. As a child, she worked on her family's farm, but she decided she didn't want to really work in the cornfields all her life. So she studied hard, she graduated top of her class, she became an incredible mathematician, programmer, scientist, and one of her other job titles was computer. She is why we have GPS navigation systems today, why you can pull out your phone and find your way with a map. So the first computers were actually humans. And computational thinking overall is just a set of problem solving methods that anybody can use, not just a machine. Now, lots of com classic computer science problems are relevant to you or the people in your life. There's the knapsack problem, for example. The knapsack problem is about figuring out how to pack a bag full of the stuff that's most valuable to you and then leaving the rest behind. It's exactly what you'll be doing as you pack up your dorm room and when you leave Bowdoin as a senior. You know, like maybe you've got a history textbook that was signed by your professor and maybe you'll keep that, but that lamp that's shaped like a polar bear, maybe that's too big for your car, maybe that will spark joy for someone else's knapsack for the next four years. Anyway, sometimes computer science problems can be relatable like that one, but that's not the full picture of what I mean when I say that computer science is about people. I'm talking about more than just the problem, more than just the answer. I'm talking about the stories behind it all because they are why we do what we do. We define the stories and the stories define us. 
Let me tell you a story about recursion. Yes, recursion. For the computer scientists and the mathematicians in the audience, don't worry, I've got a base case. This story will not go on forever. Recursion is essentially this idea that we can call upon the same set of rules over and over again to solve a problem. I had a student once who was working on a recursion problem where they had to count everybody in the room. With a traditional approach, you would just count one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. With a recursive approach, you delegate some of that counting to your neighbors who will report back to you. So for example, you might count your nearest neighbor who's next to you, maybe her name is Alice. And then you would ask Alice to count how many neighbors she has nearby. Maybe she's sitting next to Bob and Grace, so she counts two people. And then Bob and Grace can count how many neighbors they have. So basically, you count all of your nearest neighbors, and then each of your neighbors counts their nearest neighbors, and so on and so forth until the entire room is counted. My, study, my student had studied recursion a lot. They'd taken a lot of time to make sure they understood how to use recursion, and they did have a recursive algorithm that they thought would count everybody in the room. But every time they tried to count everyone, their answer was always one person short. My student was so focused on making sure that they were using recursion, this fancy technique, that they forgot to count themselves. Sometimes we get so caught up in a core aspect of a problem, stuck in the circuits, tangled in the wires, that we forget the parts that matter most. It's a lot like how the world sometimes forgets that computer science is about people. My second story is about time complexity. We computer scientists like to talk a lot about time complexity. It's a way of describing how much time it will take to solve a problem. A constant time algorithm is revered, for example, since it means it will always take the same amount of time, no matter how big the size of the input to our problem. So using a constant time algorithm means we're moving fast. And making programs that run fast is something that we talk about in our computer science classes. But speed isn't the only metric that we use. Here's an example. The final project for one of the classes that I teach is to simulate an entire world with creatures like frogs and birds just jumping and flying around. And a student called me over during class this semester. They said, my simulation of the world isn't working at all. It's not running. And I watched as they started up their project. I saw this new world be created and appear on the screen. Think of like a top-down kind of landscape nice field of flowers in a simulated meadow. There's a creature in that field, a little frog, but nothing's happening. The flowers aren't swaying in the breeze. The frog isn't hopping or moving at all. Everything is just completely still. I realized what the student had done. A part of the code was missing that slowed down the simulation, and that meant that the entire simulation was over in an instant. In the blink of an eye, that frog had actually hopped 500 times, but it happened so fast that we never saw it move. What you need, I said to the student, is an instruction that tells the whole world to pause, just for a moment. Let the world move and then pause before moving again. My student fixed the code, they ran the simulation again, this time we could see the frog hopped, the flowers swayed, the world paused for a moment, and then the frog moved forward again. Lots of students, even if they aren't computer science majors, have this idea that they have to go fast. New students that we see entering uh, computer science often try to go as fast as possible, and as a result, they end up stuck and not able to move forward. They miss the parts that help them gain a new perspective and find the next step. This pressure to be fast doesn't go away when you graduate. A Bowdoin alum called me just this week with this same worry. They weren't in the job that they wanted, and they thought that the problem was that they never moved fast enough to take advantage of opportunities when they were younger. By the end of our call, they realized that 
trying to be fast was getting in the way of who they wanted to become. You'll always have demands on your time and your space and your attention, pressure to optimize, but the world is how we build it. And sometimes improving our speed can be a helpful goal, but time complexity isn't the only factor to consider when we're solving a problem. Sometimes pausing is a necessary part of a good solution. Now my third story is the kind of story that I hope you have too. It's one of those stories that those who care about me won't let me forget. This story happened when I was a small child. And children, much like constant time algorithms, can be quite fast. They can find trouble quickly. One day I was playing in the living room with toys. I had little toy people that looked like pegs, little people you can hold in your hand like a queen and a cowboy and a dog. And I was playing with those little people, marching them around, having them go on adventures to faraway lands, imaginary castles. At one point, my family blinked, and I was gone. My toys were still there, but I had disappeared. My mother had fast reflexes. She quickly found out where I had gone. I was in the kitchen, and I had opened up all of her cupboards, and I had pulled out a container of ground coffee, and I had opened that can of coffee. Coffee grounds were all across the kitchen floor and all over my clothes, and there I was just delighting in the fact that I had made an impromptu sandbox. Of course, as adults, we know that spilled coffee is a problem, and you also don't want to be giving coffee grounds to a baby because they're going to be zooming around all over the place too after that. So this was a big, unexpected problem, but here's the thing. When my mother found me in the coffee grounds, she didn't scold me or rush into cleaning up the mess. She laughed with me as I built castles out of coffee grounds. She found the camera and she took a picture. And after that, she picked me up and dusted me off and helped me find my way back to my toys. My mom realized it wasn't about having a clean house. It was about celebrating the moment that we were in. There's always going to be problems that you won't expect. You don't have to solve these problems all at once. Finding the humor and the joyful parts of navigating obstacles and uncertainties and building closer connections with the people in those situations are all valid approaches to problem solving. They are, in fact, the best ones that I've found. Now there are more stories that your computer won't be able to tell you, stories that are tucked away in the minds of your parents and your grandparents and your friends, stories that provide you with a richer context of what the world is and how to breathe and be in it. And this leads me to the hopes that I have for you. As honorable people, I know you have fantastic potential as you go forward from here to discover and build and to solve all kinds of problems. My hopes for you are these, that you'll look for the stories, seek out joy and connection as much as you seek out truth, find moments to mindfully pause as you fill your knapsack with what you value most, Keep your cans of coffee locked in your cupboards, but remember to laugh if you forget to lock them. Check on your nearest neighbor, and don't forget to check on yourself too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah, for giving us a little glimpse into why and how students find your classes so inspiring. So thank you. The Sidney B. Karofsky Award for junior faculty, given by members of the Karofsky family, is to be awarded annually by the Dean for Academic Affairs 
in consultation with the Appointments, Promotion, and Tenure Committee on the basis of student evaluations of teaching to an outstanding Bowdoin teacher who, quote, best demonstrates the ability to impart knowledge, inspire enthusiasm, and stimulate intellectual curiosity. The prize is given to a member of the faculty who has taught at the college for at least two years. I am very pleased to announce that the 2023 recipient of the Sidney B. Karofsky Award for junior faculty is Angel Matos, Assistant Professor of Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies. It is now my pleasure to introduce, to welcome, Paris Wilson and Ari Geisler, both from the class of 2023, to the stage to perform this evening's interlude. Scherzo number no. seven for violin and cello, opus 39 by Reinhold Glier.
march to Paris and Ireland. We'll now begin the presentation of departmental prizes, beginning with Africana Studies. We ask that student recipients for each department come to the stage at the same time as the department's faculty presenter. Descriptions of all prizes and their order are in the program, so I, so I encourage you to follow along. Presenters may elect to say a few words about their award recipients. The Lennox Book Prize goes to Kevin Fleshman, class of 23, and the annual award for an outstanding work in Africana Studies goes to Ayana Opong Nandichi. They're wonderful, we love them, congratulations. pleasure to present the Anthropology Student Awards. All three of our recipients have distinguished themselves in their contemplation of the mysteries of the human condition as they unfold across space and time. And I really emphasize the word mystery because humanity is an unfinished project. And I'm confident that these three students will keep the mystery alive in their future endeavors. Um, I'm honored to present the Engaged Anthropology Prize to uh, Lily Browder and Samuel Cooper. And I'm honored to present the Elbridge Sibley Anthropology Prize to Abby Marjorie Allen. There's a show up at the uh, museum right now, Mina Loy, and uh, she was asked why she didn't go to one of our openings. And she said, I've already seen the work. 
So, um, Henry, Abby, you've already seen the work. All right. All right. Um, we're going to present the uh, visual art award. And first of all, I want to say that there are three qualities that our awardees embody curiosity, humility, and gratitude. And uh, these honorees um, have work that's up in a show right now in Edward. So, you guys should get over there and check it out before it's over. All right. Um, I want to award the um, Anne Bartlett Lewis Memorial Prize in Visual Art to Abby Wong in Absentia, and also the Richard P. Martell Jr. Memorial Prize to Ali Dougal. <laughs> and Henry Spritz in Absentia. Congratulations. Studies Award to Mickey Ryerson for her uh, amazing honors project and also to JC Song for her all around outstanding performance uh, in uh, Asian Studies. And we also have a Chinese language prize that we are gi giving to Mickey. And the Japanese language prize goes to Jack Welshlow. Ben Gorski, Associate Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry and Director of the Biochemistry Program. And I'm on stage in that capacity right now. Um, it's my great pleasure on behalf of the Biochemistry Program to uh, confer our junior prize, the John L. Holland Book Award in Biochemistry jointly uh, to two students this year, Zach Leewoods and Sophie Nigrin. say congratulations and see you next year. <laughs> Our senior prize in biochemistry, the Stephen Smith Prize, um, is awarded this year to Emma Noel, whose research advisor relayed to me a little story which I'll share. Uh, she says that she knew that Emma would go far when she asked her how uncomfortable she was potentially working with rodents and rats in behavioral studies. And she responded in part by submitting a photo from uh, her young childhood in which she somehow coerced, I believe it was five guinea pigs and a dog to adopt picture-perfect poses. <laughs> so we know you'll go far. Congratulations. <laughs> Here is 
chair of biology to award prizes to our wonderful students. I only have a short paragraph about each of them. Just kidding. Okay, so I, I am pleased to start by awarding the Copeland Gross Biology Prize um, to three senior biology majors whose dedication to the liberal, liberal arts while majoring in biology has been exemplified by their writing and mentoring and education and dancing over their course of their time at Bowdoin. And those are Sophie Birchall, <laughs> and Kelly Navarro, <laughs> and Laura Young. the Donald and Harriet S. Maycomber Prize, and that is being awarded to two senior honors uh, in majors, senior biology majors who are doing honors in biology, Olivia Bronzo Munich, <laughs> and, and Deva Holloman in absentia for their marvelous work. And finally, the James Malcolm Moulton Prize, which is a book prize, um, honors, we're honoring a quartet of junior biology majors for their spectacular work in the field, in the lab, and in the classroom. And I'm delighted to award this prize to Everett Horch in absentia. Jared Lynch. I had a great line about Sejal literally studying the birds and the bees, but I had to cut it because it had to go down. <laughs> <laughs> and finally to Nikki Young. So I'm not going to say very much, except these students are all wonderful in their each way, and I'm really happy to be able to award them their prizes tonight. So, um, so I'm just going to tell you what the prizes are, and then do the names and move on. So, uh, the, first, <laughs> the first year chemistry uh, laboratory award goes to Young Hoon Su. The first year chemistry uh, achievement award is actually split between general chemistry and advanced chemistry because we have students starting in two different areas. The general chemistry award goes to Fiona Gallagher and Blythe Thompson. Uh, the advanced award goes to uh, Renshin Chen and Hei Young Zhang. Sam Kameling is my predecessor by two generations at Bowdoin and left an endowment to celebrate students who do really well in the organic chemistry lab, which tends to soak up a lot of time. And so those two students are Ella Chu in absentia and Elijah Dundai. The Philip Mazur Prize in Chemistry goes to Bojiga Tendel. Zubin 
Kevin, uh, Kevin Creed. National uh, organization, American Chemical Society, provides uh, um, prizes for outstanding students in, in uh, general areas within chemistry, and so the uh, and as does the local section, American Chemical Society. So I'm going to let Ben, who's the biochemistry program director, do the first one. I'm back. <laughs> uh, the ACS Main Award this year goes to Barak Amasoni. a biochemistry major, so it feels appropriate to have the biochemistry program chair do that award. So the award in analytical chemistry goes to Kevin Fleshman. <laughs> the inorganic chemistry award goes to Philip Spiru. <laughs> uh, the organic chemistry award goes to Colleen hughes Macklin. Chemistry goes to Ibrahim Sala. As I said, the uh, um, uh, the Cameron Award, award was my two ger generations earlier. Dana Mayo was my immediate predecessor at Bowdoin College, and uh, when he passed away a few years ago, a few of the students uh, came up with an endowment in his name, and that goes to Catherine Barrett and Seamus Wright. of the Cinema Studies program, and we are very honored um, to make these awards to these very talented students. Um, first, the Adventure Prize, Diego, Diego Tercero. <laughs> the Rose Light Prize um, to Phoebe Marin, Emir St. George in Absentia, and Annabella Williams. And finally, the Sunrise Prize to Hadley Jeffel. So my name is Jim Higginbotham, I'm the chair of the Classics Department, and, we, and it's my pleasure really to, to honor four of our uh, remarkable students, all of whom are, their work really focuses on unlocking uh, the past, particularly the Asian Mediterranean, the culture and the people, and in particular through the study of languages. And all of four of our students here have demonstrated uh, facility and even expertise in ancient Greek and Latin. And so I have four uh, again, awards to, to uh, give out. It is really my distinct honor. Uh, the Nathan Gould Prize goes to Augie Sager. So the J.D. Sewell Greek Prize goes to Patrick Kingston.
and the J.D. Sewell Latin Prize goes to Wilson Thors. And finally, and I hope I don't stumble over this, uh, the Hannibal Hamlin Emory Latin Prize goes to Bradford Dudley. I'm Stephen Bearden for the Economics Department. We have two prizes to award tonight to some very talented students of ours. The first uh, we're awarding, awarding jointly to five students is the Adam Smith Book Prize. We give the award to recognize juniors who demonstrate exceptional analytical skills and originality in the study of economy and society. And uh, the book that we're giving to our students is by our own colleague, Professor Zarina Khan. Uh, her book, uh, Inventing Ideas, uh, 
published in 2020. Uh, the first recipient is Gavin Kirsten. Also, Adam Nelson. <laughs> Jake Phillips. <laughs> Alex Rakapen. and Luke Tingley. <laughs> the other award that we have to give tonight is the Paul H. Douglas Prize. And the Economics Department uh, awards the prize in honor of Paul Douglas, class of 13, an eminent economist, also a Mainer from his youth, a Marine Corps officer, and a United States Senator from Illinois. The prize recognizes Bowdoin Juniors who show outstanding promise in scholarship and economics. Uh, we have three recipients. Uh, the first is uh, Addie Paul Parikh. And uh, two in absentia to Ezra Jones and Sarah Greenberg. My name is Chuck Dorn, I'm chair of the Education Department. I'm delighted to be here this evening. Um, the Education Department has two categories uh, of awards that we are presenting tonight. The first is to a group uh, of Bowdoin teacher scholars. So this is a group of students who over a number of years and then intensely during one particular semester complete all of the requirements to receive a certification as main uh, secondary school uh, teachers. Uh, and of course, Maine has reciprocity with the rest of the country, so these folks can take their teaching certificate anywhere in the United States and uh, can begin teaching in a public school. Um, we have five folks in that category tonight, um, two of them in absentia, uh, Annabel Husted and then Mason uh, Winter, who actually completed the program as a junior, and then three folks who are with us tonight, uh, Emma Hatt, Jenna Robbins, and Esther Fernandez-Rosario. The second category of award is the Education Department Award for Interdisciplinary Scholarship. Uh, this is an award that we give each year to a student who has really sort of um, dug deeply into inter interdisciplinary work. In, in, in this case, with Stephanie Daly, it's related to education and neuroscience, and the department was uh, unanimous, really, in, the, uh, in support of acknowledging the work that she has done. So let's hear it for Stephanie. <laughs>
name is Guy Mark Foster. I'm here representing the English department. We have a number of, of awards to give out tonight, so I won't read the details of each award. You can follow along in your program. But I want to give the names of the awards and the students. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, the first award goes to, uh, it's the Philip Henry Brown Prize. It goes to Margot No. The second award uh, is the Academy of American Poets uh, Colette and Inez Poetry Prize Award, and it goes to Bobby Murray. <laughs> the next award is the Hawthorne Prize, and it goes to Eliana um, Roberts. The next award is the Natalie Walker Llewellyn Poetry Prize, and it goes to Hannah Kim in that session. <laughs> the next award, there are two recipients for this. Uh, the Nonfiction Prize Award, uh, Hannah Kim in absentia, again. And then, yes. <laughs> And the second uh, awardee is Natsumi Meyer. Uh, there's an honorable mention for this award, uh, Kina O'Flaherty. She is not here today, so she's in absentia also. The next award, we have two recipients for this award, uh, the Poetry Prize. Uh, Jing Juan Huang, she's also in absentia. And then Noah Zeiderbeck is here. We have two recipients for the next award also, the Prey English Prize. Uh, the first recipient is Andrew Chang. And then uh, Josh, Josh Pablo Patel. Uh, the next award is the Forbes Rickard Jr. Memorial Poetry Prize, and it goes to Sophia Tatine Darvis. David Sewell uh, Premium Award, and it goes to Eva Ahn. <laughs> the next award is the Mary B. Sinkinson Short Story Prize, and that goes to Zoe Wilson. <laughs> and the final award of this evening for the English department is the Bertram Lewis Smith Junior Prize, and that goes to May Bach. My name is Connie Chang, I'm director of the Environmental Studies Program, and I'm really honored to present our two awards. Our academic award in Environmental Studies goes to two students. Um, I taught both of them their first years. I remember crossing my fingers and toes that they would continue with the major because I was so impressed by their brilliance and humility. Both of them are omnivorous and creative thinkers who have combined hard work with palpable enthusiasm for environmental studies. So this award goes to John Auer and Leif Maynard. Yeah. 
Our second award is the Community Service Award in Environmental Studies. And um, both of these uh, recipients have done so much for both the community at Bowdoin and beyond. And just to give one example, um, during the pandemic, when most of us were indoors and, and turning inward, both of these individuals were knocking on doors to get out the vote in 2020, deeply committing to ensuring the vitality of our democracy and encouraging voters to consider the need for climate action as they fill out their ballots. Um, one of many things that they have done for our community. So this award goes to Leif Maynard again, and to Layla Trummel. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, Professor Angel Montes from the Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies Program. Today, we are delighted and honored to present the Edith Lansing Kuhn Sills Prize in Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies to Paloma Aguirre. And one thing I want to point out really quickly, not only did Paloma help foster and grow the program immensely during these past three years, but we also refer to her as the unofficial faculty member of the GSWS program. Just so that you know how much she contributed to the program. So, um, Paloma, thank you so much. Jill Smith from the German department. I'm pleased to award these students their prizes. The German department's prize winners this year span from a first year student to a graduating senior major and exemplify the liberal arts in their combined study of German language, literature, and culture with STEM fields like mathematics and computer science. Two of them began their formal study of German in their first semester at Bowdoin and became majors while the first year student took AP German and placed into an upper intermediate course in his first semester. So, so many possible paths. Our first prize is a consular prize in literary interpretation, and this is open only to senior majors, and our winner is Sarah Salazar. <laughs> but it has uh, double honors, so she will get a few extra words for that. Our Old Broad Bay Prize in Reading Comprehension and Translation goes to three separate winners. Uh, that first year student I was talking about, who all, also has shown his interest in uh, comprehension and translation in his recent project on the Enigma machine, so quite clear that he has a sincere interest in cryptography. Um, and that's James Duncan. <laughs> Will Jorgensen began taking German at the height of COVID on Zoom, but he spent last spring in Switzerland and came back with a fantastic Swiss accent, Swiss German, um, and a double major in German and computer science, another coder and decoder, so Will. Sarah Salazar, a double major in German and Mathematics. Sarah started from scratch in German here at Bowdoin. And when I talk about Sarah, I often say she's the stealth weapon of the German department because she often sits quietly, listening carefully to others, and then she poses the question that stuns all of us or makes a point that shows just how careful a reader and interpreter of texts and films she is, hence the double threat. So here we go.
back again. Chris Herlin, this time for the government department. Who knows where I'll show up next? Uh, <laughs> government has four subfields, and the first prize for American politics goes to Carl Williams. The second prize for comparative politics goes to Rory Duffel. And the prize for international relations goes to Jada Hodge Williams. And in political theory, we have Bradford Stone Dudley. We also award the uh, Richard Morgan Prize for Excellence in the Study of the Constitution, and that goes to Luke Porter. David Hack from the Department of History. Um, we give two awards. Um, the first is the Dr. Samuel and Rose A. Bernstein Prize for Excellence in the Study of History. And I'm happy to say that I either have taught, advised, or otherwise met all three of these recipients, and it's a pleasure to give them because they're all very well deserved. Um, Amy Kai. <laughs> Seth Gorlick. So, yeah. And Talia Trasco's heart. So, um, the next prize is the Phyllis Marshall Watson History Prize. I have not met either of these two students, but I have had the pleasure of reading the nominating essays that professors did submit, and so you are, it was a pleasure to read those and also highly deserving of these prizes. The first is Justice Dixon. And the second is Mile Winterbottom. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Good. Hi everyone, my name is Margaret Boyle and I'm the director of our Latin American, Caribbean, and Latinx Studies program. And I'm so excited to celebrate these amazing students who do great work for our program. Our first prize, the John Harold Turner Prize in Latin American Studies, celebrates students' academic accomplishments in the programs. And these two recipients have been celebrated by all of us, really because of the way that they're doing the interdisciplinary work that our program uh, wants to recognize. This prize goes to Moya Parkinson. <laughs> and to Gail Saez Hall. Our second award is the Latin American Studies Award for Public Engagement. And I will say that one of our recipients did fantastic work connecting his academic interests to a leadership position for ASB trips. And our other recipient has done incredible leadership work around the multilingual manners program. Our first recipient is Edwin Sanchez Huizard. And our second recipient is Julia Line.
So do we win? <laughs> All right. um, hello, I'm Jennifer Tabak, chair of the math department, and it is my great pleasure to award our prizes this evening. Our first award is the Bowdoin Mathematics Prize, which is awarded to three rising junior or seniors based on their potential for contributing to a broad and inclusive mathematical community. And the students who won the prize wrote very moving essays about their vision for how to achieve this. So I'm happy to award this prize tonight to three Bowdoin math majors, Vishali Miriagala, Sejal Sarati, and Kenny Ventress. Our second prize is our Senior Book Award. We had such an exceptional group of seniors this year that we couldn't choose among them and we decided to recognize them all. Um, <laughs> I have to say this award recognizes their academic achievements, but also, while this is not a requirement for the award, all of our, all of our recipients have really contributed to the mathematics community on campus and the local mathematics community. Um, all of them have been learning assistants or graders to work with their peers, and several of them have worked in my math circle supporting um, local junior high kids who love math. So I'm very happy to award the Hammond Mathematics Prize this year to Sarah Clark, Zach Flood, Ari Geisler, Jun Tao Lu, Connor Mars, and Ethan Winters. Our Smythe Prize um, recognizes two exceptional sophomore mathematics students. Um, it comes with a very small monetary award, which used to, in 1856, or, sorry, 1861, cover tuition and books, and now might cover dinner. <laughs> um, but we're happy to award it regardless. <laughs> um, I will read the names of this year's recipients and the other people who are awarded this as sophomores but are still with us. Um, this year's recipients are David Guan and Ziu Hu. And previous recipients include Sarah Greenberg, Arav Agarwal, Sarah Clark, and Gabriel Ong. And lastly, our most fun to say prize, our 100 pi minus epsilon prize. And this is awarded to three first or second year students, well, to some number of first and second year students um, who exhibit just joy in doing mathematics. And it's $314.15, <laughs> um, hence the 100 pi minus epsilon. This year's recipients are Avery Cutler, Leah Dichter, and Graham Lucas. Hello, I'm Frank Mountcherry, Chair of the Music Department, and it's my pleasure and honor to celebrate and award these three students. So first, uh, the Elliot Schwartz Award for the most compelling music composition goes to Rowland Luo, and for her piano piece, Seance Suite, 
which will be premiered next Thursday at 7.30 on this stage. So get over here. The second award is the Sue Winchell Burnett Music Prize, which goes to the member of the senior class who made the most significant performance-based contribution to the department. And this prize is awarded this year to Logan Gillis for her contribution to uh, choral and vocal music. And especially notable will be her world premiere of a piece for the chamber choir and chamber orchestra which will be in the chapel tomorrow at three o'clock. See you there. And finally, the Mary Hunter Prize is awarded for achievement in writing about music in a social and historical context. And we award this prize to Anna Diakonu for her essay, Beethoven and the Western Music Canon. I'm also back again. I'm Emily Peterman from Earth and Oceanographic Science, and this evening it is my great pleasure to award the Sumner Increase Kimball Prize to Jean Clemente. Jean is an interdisciplinary and creative scientist whose academic interests span the natural sciences. He's built expertise in ecological and biogeochemical systems, both in modern and deep geologic time. And he has an impressive, oh, excuse me. He has an impressive track record of demonstrated excellence in coursework and research, and has received multiple national awards for his work. In short, he epitomizes both academic and research excellence across the natural sciences. Please join me in congratulating Jean and wishing him our very best as he begins his PhD this fall at MIT. Hi, everyone. I'm Manolo Diaz-Rios. I'm the chair of the Neuroscience Program. It is a great pleasure to uh, award the Mono Neuroscience Prize. Uh, Mono was, uh, the Mono Prize was established by a neuro major of our own, uh, David Mono, back in 99. Uh, this prize is awarded for excellence in research by a student majoring in neuroscience. I have to say we're extremely proud of these students and all our majors, but some of these students have been in our labs for two years and even more, and the quality of the work that they have done not only makes us proud as neuroscience faculty, but I'm sure it will make any grad program in this country and beyond very, very proud. So with that, I want to award the Mono Prize to Sydney Bonotto. Lucy O'Sullivan. <laughs> Isabel Petropolis. <laughs> Eliza Ree. <laughs> Violet Ricieri. And Jackie Sidden.
Hi, everyone. I'm Madeline Massal from the Department of Physics and Astronomy. It's always a joy to come and celebrate our strong students and also see where all the students I've seen from other departments are really uh, demonstrating their excellence. So um, glad to be here on this happy night. I'm going to start with our prize for the promising sophomore scholars in our department. Um, we're very happy to give these awards today to David Kwan and Abby Chris. For senior prizes, we have uh, things divided a little bit by subfield. So we first have an experimental prize for Ni Nguyen. And then we have a, a prize in the for theoretical work for Angela McKenzie. And our final prize recognizes students who have done exceptional service to the department and to their fellow students as learning assistants in physics departments. One of the ways I know so many students across the campus is that they take intro physics in the department. And um, for students who take intro physics and intro astronomy, sometimes the physics department is an intimidating place to visit. The learning assistants really work with those students to make sure they know that they're welcome and appreciated and that they communicate all of the best parts and funnest parts of physics effectively. And so we have a tremendous crew who dedicate their time to that um, and we're always really happy to recognize their efforts. This year we have three uh, exceptionally good uh, learning assistants. Um, Sean Lee and Ursula Shea to, rec to recognize, and also one student I don't know because he taught astronomy and I don't ever teach astronomy, but um, James Giltner, I hear that you are also fabulous. Um, at this point in the evening, I'm going to say I'm an incarnation of Robert Morrison. Um, I'd like to start with um, a new award, our Award for Excellence in the Study of Religion. Um, it goes to Leah Cornmount. <laughs> Leah has, um, we have a remarkable bunch of seniors this year, another one's on stage, and I hope, yeah, she's here, right. um, and uh, uh, Leo's written a remarkable senior honors project on uh, religion and uh, religion among and chaplaincy to incarcerated people. Um, it's about as real as it gets. On the other hand, in um, Intro to Religion 1101, we start with I start with a lot of magical realism. Uh, one of the things you can write about is the film uh, Princess Mononoke, um, and the Edgar Oaks Acorn Prize um, for best uh, paper in Intro to Religion goes to both Hayden Burke and Liam Carvajal Yanka. Sorry. Hayden Byrne. Um, even at the 2000 level, uh, we keep it magical. Um, this year, uh, my colleague for Halloween um, told the, uh, had the students read about a place called Endor in Hebrew or Endor in English. Um, there is a witch there, and then in post-biblical film, there are Ewoks. The Leah Ruth Thuman Biblical Literature Prize goes to Maggie Frederick.
Good evening. I'm Anita Vitikongolo, Chair of Romance Languages and Literatures, and it's my pleasure to uh, present our students with uh, their awards. Uh, I'm going to start with um, our award uh, in Romance Languages and Literatures, and then uh, do Francophone Studies, and then my colleagues uh, from the other sections, Italian Studies and Hispanic Studies, will uh, present their awards to, to our students. Um, our prize for excellence in Romance Languages and Literatures goes to Maria Garcia. <laughs> Francophone Studies now. The Goodwin Francophone Studies Prize goes to um, Gilles Claire Cher. And to um, Hayden Robert Weverwall. Our Eton Lee Francophone Studies Prize goes to Eleanor Bayras. Okay, d'accord. All right, so Eleanor uh, Bayras is in absentia, and uh, we have Tatum uh, Kofi with us. Tatum. Uh, and Victoria Dunphy. Italian studies now. Hi, I'm Davide Gavioli in Italian studies. And um, with this year's recipients of the prizes in Italian studies, Borden will finally have its very own Borden in Italy program because Bram uh, has been selected to teach with the site program in uh, Lombardy and Tando and Lucas uh, will be doing uh, research as Fulbright scholars, uh, Tando in Padova and uh, Lucas in Naples. So finally, we have our own Italian studies program. Yay! <laughs> so um, the Dante Prize in Italian studies goes to uh, Bram, AKA Bruno Hollis, and Tando Kumalo. Raimondi Prize in Italian Studies goes to Lucas Di Cerbo. <laughs> he has been the rock of the department for the past four years, so I don't know how we're going to do without him, but we'll manage. And I'm Margaret Boyle, back for Hispanic Studies, and I am so excited to celebrate our senior, Izzy Miller, who has taken many classes with all of us, and I especially want to recognize her amazing work in an independent study with me this last year. Um, Izzy, congratulations. And we have two sophomores in our program that we want to recognize, and they are both in a poetry and theater seminar with me this semester, so I'm very lucky. Uh, Miles Berry and Joseph Park. Muchas felicidades.
Reed Johnson, Russian department. Um, today I get to bestow the Russian Scholar Laureate Award uh, to a student. I, I cannot enumerate the many qualities that he brings today, but I wanted to just say a few. Mellon Mays fellow, two-time winner of the State Department funded Critical Language Scholarship, which is sort of unheard of to have to win that twice. Uh, he went to Kyrgyzstan and will be in a, just a few weeks setting off to Tbilisi, Georgia. Uh, and after that, he'll be returning to Kyrgyzstan on a Fulbright. And he's also um, the author of a fantastic honors project on contemporary Russian film. Join me in uh, uh, congratulating Colby Santana. And I'm Mira Nikolova, and I'm thrilled tonight to present the Prize for Excellence in Russian Language and Literature to two very deserving seniors. I've had the privilege and joy to work with each of them for almost three years now. Uh, both of our recipients are dedicated students of language and literature, insightful writers, and talented poets, playwrights, and actors. Please join me in congratulating and recognizing Grace Cross, and Liam McNett. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Shruti Devgan uh, from Sociology and I'm pleased to present four awards on behalf of the department. The first award is the Award for Distinguished Public Sociology and it goes to Kenya Matthew. In a nomination letter by a peer, they wrote, Kenya is committed to using her sociology major to engage in work outside of the classroom. She focuses on issues of black maternal mortality and is invested in educating people as well as devising ways to mitigate this social problem. The next prize is the Elbridge uh, Sibley Prize, and this is awarded to Selena Chin. Selena's professors have this to say about her and her work. From her first year writing seminar, Deconstructing Racism, to her outstanding honors project, Selena Chin has distinguished herself for her keen intellect, sharp wit, and her indefatigable work ethic. We are all excited for the boundless heights her sociological imagination would take her. The next award is the Matilda White Riley Independent Study Prize, and it goes again to Kenya Matthew. According to Kenya's professors, it's undoubtedly her deep commitment to working on improvement, improving maternal mortality, particularly in black communities, that made her project and subsequent public presentations so strong. And finally, we have the Matilda White Riley Class Project Award, and there are two co-winners of this award. I'm going to invite students to receive their awards one at a time. First, Selena Chin. According to Selena's professor, Selena's paper on state control of reproduction in Japan was exemplary in the way she contextualized reproductive practices, policies, and resistances as rooted in the larger social institutions such as economy, gender, family, and schools, and thereby argue that the possibility of Japan seeing higher fertility is not likely. <laughs> and last, but certainly not the least, Alexandria Pizzino, again for the Matilda White Riley Class Project Award. Ali's professor had this to say about her class project. Ali's podcast is a clear testimony to how sociology can help us ask new questions about mental health. It shows the limits of psychiatry and understanding anxiety and depression, and broadens our imagination about the relationship between medication, mental health, and stigma. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. I'm Abigail Killeen, Professor of Theater and Chair of Theater and Dance. As the last department presenting this evening, it seems fitting to end how we began. They're wonderful. We love them. <laughs> the Bowdoin Dance Group Award goes to Isabel Petropoulos. The, the award for excellence in dance performance is Dylan Richmond in absentia. The award for outstanding contribution to theater and dance goes to Julia Jennings. The, Will the William H. Moody Award goes to Sarah Minoru and Lily Smith. And the Alice Merrill Mitchell Prize goes to Suleiman Touré in absentia. So I've been making a few notes as we've gone along here. Um, the first thing I want to do, and she, there she is, I want to thank Michelle. So we have a huge staff, but Michelle, thank you. And Sarah, Angel, um, uh, congratulations, Sarah. Gr amazing talk, Angel, congratulations, and uh, good luck next year. Uh, and to Paris and uh, Ari, beautiful music, so thank you for that. For anyone that doubts uh, or wonders why we do what we do at Bowdoin College or how we do what we do at Bowdoin College, tonight is an amazing example or answer to both of those questions. Uh, the, the knowledge that our faculty have of the work that our students are doing and who you are as human beings, the amazing hard work that is uh, in evidence by these remarkable accomplishments that, that come with collaboration and drive and passion and creativity are all uh, uh, out here for everyone to see on stage this evening. And I, I also want to put an exclamation point on that. It should not be forgotten by anyone, I know it will not be forgotten by you, that you have done all of this in what has been an historically challenging time for which you were, uh, no one was prepared, it was not fair, but it was what it was and you overcame and, uh, and um, created for yourselves an amazing intellectual and academic journey, which has, uh, in some ways, not in all ways, ended tonight on this stage with, uh, with the recognition of all that you have done. Uh, and if you take nothing else away from that, you can do anything. So give yourselves a gigantic hand. Again, my great thanks to our faculty colleagues for making all of this possible, uh, and congratulations again to all of our students. Have a wonderful evening. This is why Michelle is here. We have to sing the alma mater. So, so we're going to have Paris and Ari back, I think. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't bring my notes up. Come on up. Sorry, I, I knew I should have done that, but anyway. Logan and Augie. You want to come up here, Michelle, and just, I mean, you should just take over, so. All right, yeah. All right. The words are on the back of your program. <laughs>